Welcome to Electra Online, and now we're going to find the impedance of a parallel circuit. We took a simple circuit, just two branches. On the left branch, we have an inductor or a resistor. On the right branch, we have a capacitor and a resistor, and we have to find the impedance, the current. Now, of course, the current is going to be different in the left branch and the right branch, so we're going to find both currents, and we're going to find the voltage drop across the uh, inductor and the voltage drop across the capacitor. So, how do we do that? Well, first we want to find the total impedance. And we already know that since it's a parallel branch, the total impedance is going to be the product over the sum. So this is going to be equal to the impedance going from A to B times the impedance going from C to D divided by the impedance going from A to B plus the impedance going from C to D. All right, so that's our goal. That's our strategy. Now when we multiply impedances, we like to put it into the magnitude and phase angle form. And if we add impedances, we like to put it into the real part and imaginary part form, like the complex number form. So we have to find impedance in both ways. So let's go ahead and do that. So the impedance going from A to B across the branch with the inductor is equal to the real part, which is 20 ohms, uh, plus the imaginary part, plus I times 30 ohms, and of course, since it's an inductor, it's 90 degrees ahead of the resistor, so we write plus I times 30 ohms. If we're going to write that as a magnitude and um, an angle form, we have to find the magnitude, and we do that by taking each of these and squaring them, add them together, and take the square root. So we take 20 squared uh, plus 30 squared, Add them together, take the square root, and that gives us 36, uh, close enough, 36 ohms. And then the angle, and again, if you're not quite sure what we're doing here, let me show you. So if we write the impedance on a phase diagram, it would look like this. So the impedance on a phase diagram, we have 20 ohms for the resistor portion, 20 ohms. We have the 30 ohms for the reactance portion right here. So this would be X sub L, that would be 30 ohms. And to find the impedance of that, we do a vector sum, so to speak, right there. And so the magnitude of the impedance is equal to the square root of 20 squared plus 30 squared, which we find out to be 36 ohms. And then if we want to find the phase angle, call that theta, the phase angle theta is equal to the arctangent of the opposite side, which is x sub L, which is 30, divided by the adjacent side, which is 20. So 1.5, take the arctangent, and we get 56.3 degrees and it's the head of the uh, resistance, so that would be phase angle of a positive 56.3 uh, degrees. So this is the impedance across this branch, both in complex number form and magnitude and phase angle form. Okay, we'll do the same for uh, Z going from C to D. So we have a resistance of 50 ohms, and then minus, because that's a, re that's a capacitive reactant, which is, lags 90 degrees in phase, so we have a minus I times 40 ohms, and that would be equal to, again, we do the same thing. In this case, the capacitive reactant is down here at minus 40, so it would be X sub C. It's a 40 ohms, but it's in the negative direction, and then the resistance would be 50 ohms right there, so it would be R equals 50 ohms, and then we want to do the Oh, I don't have a lot of room here, it gets a little messy, but then notice that would be the impedance right here of the branch with the capacitor in it. So we take the product of both branches, 20 and 40, oh, we have 50 and 40, add them together, take the square root, so we have 50 squared plus 40 squared equals, take the square root, and we get 64, so this is equal to 64 ohms, and the phase angle, that would be the arctangent of 40 over 50, so 40 divided by 50, take the arctangent, and we get 37 degrees, or just 36.9 degrees, 36.9 degrees. So again, what we're doing here is we're finding this phase angle right here. We do that by taking the arctangent of the opposite side, which is 40, divided by the adjacent side, which is 50. Arctangent of that, 36.9 degrees. All right, so now we have, oh, and it's minus, minus 36.9 degrees because it's lagging in phase. It's not ahead in phase. All right. So now we have the impedances. We can now find the total impedance using this equation. So this is equal to the product of these two, which is ZAB, which is 36 ohms. Multiply times the phase angle. I don't really put, yeah, I can put, 
parentheses is around it, so that would be 56.3 degrees. And that's multiplied times 64 ohms times the phase angle of minus 36.9 degrees. And take the whole thing divided by the sum of these two. So now we're going to use a complex number format. So it's going to be 20 plus I times 30. And we're going to add that to that would be 50 minus I times 40. Notice I didn't put the ohm symbol in there because I'm running out of room there. So I just left ohm symbol out, but remember all that is in ohms. And so when we multiply those two together, we get 36 times 64, that gives us 2304. 2304, that would be ohm squared. With the phase angle, you add these two together. So we have, this is a decimal place right there. So we have 56.3 minus 36.9. That gives us 19.4, 19.4 degrees. And divided by the sum here, that would be 70, uh, and that would be minus I times 10. So the, the real parts together is 70. The complex part of the two numbers together, or the imaginary part of those two parts together, is minus 10. Now, in order to divide these two, we have to convert this to the magnitude angle format. So this is 2304 at an angle of 19.4 degrees. And here again, we take the sum of the squares of the two components, add them together, take the square root. So we take 70 squared plus 10 squared, divide or take the square root of that, and we get 70.7, 70.7 with a phase angle of and it's going to be a negative angle because we have a negative imaginary component there. So it's 10 divided by 70 and take the arc tangent of that. And we get minus 8.1 degrees. Okay, in case you're wondering what in the world did he just do, I took the denominator of that, realizing on a phase diagram I have a real part of 70 ohms and an imaginary part of minus 10 ohms. Right, this is the imaginary part, that's the real part. If I add those together, like in vector format, this here is the impedance of the denominator. That would be 70.7, and then I'm looking for the angle here, theta, which is this angle right here, minus 8.1 degrees. That's how we do that. Okay, now that I have it in the magnitude phase format, I can now go ahead and divide this by this, and add these two together. So we have 23, Oh, 04 divided by 70.7, so we get 32.6, 32.6 ohms, and the phase angle here is, if you divide, you subtract, but since at the denominator it's a negative, subtract negative, it becomes positive, so it's 19.4 plus 8.1, that would be 27.5 degrees, and this here is the total impedance of the parallel branch. So, to repeat real quick, to find the impedance of a parallel branch is the product of the sum. When you do the product, you multiply the two together like this and you put it in the magnitude phase form. When you add, you put it in the complex number form, add it together, then turn this into the magnitude phase form so you can do the division and this is then finally the result. That's the total impedance of that circuit. Now how do you find the current, let's say in the branch on the left, the current through the inductor, we call it I sub L. Well, with Ohm's law, we know that I is equal to V over R, but of course, in the case of impedance, this is going to be the voltage across the branch divided by the impedance of that branch, which is the impedance from A to B. All right, now notice the voltage is going to be the same as the voltage across the source right here because this is parallel to the source right there, so we have 100 volts at a phase angle of zero degrees, divided by the impedance going from A to B, and the impedance going from A to B is right there, 36 ohms and 56.3 degrees. 36 ohms with a phase angle of a positive 56.3 degrees. And so there we get a current of 100 divided by 36, which is 2.78, 2.78 amps, with a phase angle of minus 56.3 degrees. Since we're dividing, you're going to subtract the angle at the bottom. To find the current, so this would be the current across the inductor, the current across the capacitor is equal to V divided by, well, in this case, I can skip this, right? So we're simply going to see that's the voltage divided by the impedance of the other branch from C to D, because I'm looking for the current in the right branch, the current with the capacitor, 
the branch with the capacitor, so that's 100 volts with a phase angle of 0 degrees, divided by the impedance from C to D, which is right here, 64 ohms, 64 ohms, with a phase angle of minus 36.9 degrees, which is equal to, what's 100 divided by 64? We get 1.56 amps, 1.56 amps, with a phase angle of a positive 36.9 degrees. So now we have the currents in both branches. Notice that the currents through those two branches are out of phase with one another. That makes a lot of sense because here we have an inductor, there we have a capacitor, and of course they would react differently to the current. Finally, what if we want to find the voltage across the inductor right here? So the voltage across the inductor is equal to the current times the impedance across the inductor. So in this case, that is the current through that branch from A to B, which is right here, that would be 2.78 amps. That would be, oh, I need to get the phase angle on that. Let me write that again. So that would be 2.78 amps with a phase angle of minus 56.3 degrees. So that's the current through that branch. Now we multiply that times the impedance of the inductor only, not the total impedance, but the impedance of the inductor only, X sub L. And of course, the impedance of X sub L, let's see, where are we? Uh, that would be 30 ohms. That would be uh, 30 ohms and it would have a phase angle of a positive 90 degrees. Because we're only taking the inductance portion, not the resistor that went with it. Okay, now we multiply these two together. So 2.78 times 30 is 83.4 volts with a phase angle of, we add these two angles together, so that would be 23.7. 23.7 degrees and then we do it again for the voltage across the capacitor voltage across the capacitor is equal to the current through that branch now notice I have to use the current through this branch which is the current right here which would be 1.56 amps and the impedance across the capacitor so here we have 1.56 amps with a phase angle of 36.9 degrees and then we multiply that times the impedance across the capacitor. Now, of course, that would be the same as the reactants, but for a capacitor, the phase angle is minus 90 degrees, so that's 40 ohms times the phase angle of minus 90 degrees. So when you multiply 1.56 times 40, you get 62.4 volts. With a phase angle, when you add the two angles together, so subtract 37 from that, that would be 53.1. 53.1 degrees, and it would be negative, negative 53.1 degrees. So that means the voltage across the capacitor branch lags compared to the voltage across the inductance branch. We only talk about the voltage across the capacitor and the inductor. So that's how you deal with parallel branches. Again, it's exactly the same as with resistors, except instead of using simply the resistances, you actually have to work with the impedances. Again, when you multiply and divide, put it into magnitude phase angle format. When you add and subtract, put it in the, the complex number format. And that's the easiest way to do it. Okay.